Good morning. My name is Martine Stanberry, and I'm an associate professor of mathematics at Tennessee State University. And the title of our presentation today is Engaging Students for Success in Calculus, a Course Revitalization Model. So we'll start with an overview of our presentation. First, we'll talk about uh, the background and significance of our research. We'll discuss the research goals, uh, research theories, teaching techniques and technologies. Then uh, we'll describe our study design, the implementation of, of the study and results. Uh, we'll briefly talk about uh, some ongoing research that we're doing, which is related to the work that is a part of this presentation. We'll discuss uh, potential future directions, and then we'll have questions at the end. Background and significance of research. So when we started to think about the type of work or research we wanted to do related to uh, undergraduate mathematics and best teaching practices, we wanted to look up some information about nationally, what do these statistics look like in terms of STEM student success and progression? So based on the national college and university statistics, only about 40% of students who plan to complete a degree in a science technology, engineering, or mathematics, otherwise known as STEM area, actually do so. So how do we help the other 60% successfully complete STEM degrees? So to address this issue, one goal of our work was to increase student success rates in undergraduate calculus. So there were three major reports produced to inform about how to improve undergraduate STEM education. There was the PCAS report, the MAA Common Vision report, and most recently, Charting a Course for Success, America's Strategy for STEM Education, or CCSASSE. So in 2012, <clears throat> the President's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology reported three recommendations to increase the number of STEM professionals. Number one, improve the first two years of STEM education in colleges and universities. Number two, provide students with tools and or resources to excel. And number three, diversify pathways to STEM degrees. So then in 2015, MAA released a report similar to the PCAS report. Uh, this particular report was written by members representing five different professional societies involved in mathematics education. And it focuses on using curricula, course structure, workplace preparation, and faculty development to improve undergraduate education, especially in the first two years. It emphasizes using evidence-based pedagogical methods to enhance student learning. And then most recently in 2018, CCSA SSE report was released, which was developed by the Committee on STEM Education of the National Science and Technology Council and they also highlighted three goals in this report, which were to build strong foundations for STEM literacy, increase diversity, equity, and inclusion in STEM, and prepare the STEM workforce for the future. Research goals. So generally, we wanted to establish highly effective teaching techniques in order to uh, improve the undergraduate calculus that we offered at Tennessee State University. So to enhance student engagement was the first part of, of the establishing these highly effective teaching strategies. Number two was to improve student success rates in Calculus One. And then number three, to increase STEM student persistence and graduation. 
So when we thought about our role in terms of the broader impact uh, in, in terms of increasing uh, the number of STEM graduates, we're um, thinking of our part as implementing teaching strategies to enhance student learning in Calculus 1 or the first semester calculus course. And then from there, um, that should increase student success in calculus. And then that should improve the first two years of undergraduate STEM education to increase the number of graduates in STEM areas. Research theories, techniques, and technologies. Our work was grounded in Bloom's Taxonomy. Bloom's Taxonomy is a framework that was published in 1956, and the primary author was Benjamin Bloom. This taxonomy uses a multi-tiered scale to organize the levels of expertise required to achieve measurable student outcomes. Now within Bloom's Taxonomy, there are knowledge-based goals, skills-based goals, and effective-based goals. There are six levels of cognition, knowledge, comprehension, and application, which are normally considered the lower levels, analysis, synthesis, and evaluation, which are considered the higher levels. To apply Bloom's taxonomy in our course content, uh, we considered the lower levels first, knowledge, comprehension, and application. At the knowledge level, students are expected to be able to recall fundamental facts. And how we would apply this in Calculus 1 would be to maybe ask a student to state a, state a theorem or to state certain properties or to give a definition. At the comprehension level, students should be able to demonstrate understanding of fundamental facts. So at this level, we may ask students to use those theorems or use those definitions to solve a problem. At the application level, students will be able to apply acquired knowledge in a new or different situation. So at this level, we may ask students to solve a multi-step problem which uses multiple theorems or multiple definitions in order to solve the problem. The higher order levels, analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. So at the analysis level, students are expected to be able to analyze information to determine relationships, structure, and relevance. So at this level, we may ask students to determine if a particular theorem can apply to a given situation. At the synthesis level, students are expected to be able to examine information to arrive at a conclusion. So we may ask students to generate a function based on some given information and valid assumptions that they, need, they may need to make. At the evaluation level, students should be able to prove statements or to make judgment based on a set of criteria. So we, at this level, we may ask students to evaluate a worked out problem to prove or disprove the correctness of the problem by providing justifications for the work or by providing counterexamples to disprove the work. Active learning was a key component of our project. So what exactly is active learning? In recent years, many studies have supported a move toward active learning in collegiate STEM courses. Active learning is a process of education in which the students are actively engaged in activities such as writing, discussions, reading, or problem solving. Active learning encourages the students to analyze, synthesize, and reflect and evaluate course content. So you, you can see here that active learning works in tandem with Bloom's taxonomy. There are many teaching techniques involved in active learning. Some of the ones that we used through our study were um, a short reflective writing prompt, think, pair, share, the flipped classroom, inquiry-based learning, cooperative learning, 
and collaborative learning. In order to successfully implement active learning activities into a course, the professor must find a balance between lecture and active learning activities. Something that we often use were um, interactive lecture, lectures. In an interactive lecture, we would lecture for maybe 15 minutes and then let the students actively engage in some exercise. And then we would lecture again and then let the students actively engage in some type of exercise. Providing guidance and instruction, regardless of the type of class activity, is important. An active learning can be done individually. It can be done in pairs, as small groups, or even as the whole class and it can be done with or without technology. Some of the potential benefits of active learning include an increase in student learning. Active learning can enhance student motivation, enjoyment of, and personal investment in their own education. Active learning supports deeper learning and it can contribute to the development of stronger critical thinking skills. Active learning can promote, a higher, can promote higher retention rates and better performance in a classroom learning environment. Through active learning, students are given opportunities to participate in mathematical investigation, communication, and group problem solving. And also, they receive feedback from both their professor and their peers, and this can have a positive impact on learning. These potential benefits are why we wanted to conduct this study. A type of technology that we used was the clicker technology. Clickers are a student response system. They're small handheld devices and they allow students to respond to posted questions. And these questions are usually given in a multiple choice format. One of the benefits of the clickers is that the students receive their feedback immediately. And then at that point, we can engage in discussion or we can you know, clarify if there were any mistakes made. Often the um, active learning technique that we often use with clickers was to think, pair, share um, active learning technique. It's a cooperative learning technique where the students would work individually. They would think about the problem and then they would work um, with their table mate and they would share their answers. And then we would discuss the problem to see if there was any further clarification needed. Clickers can be used for a variety of purposes. Um, to assess student understanding of course material, to increase student involvement in the class, to um, survey student opinions, and to manage group activities. Engaging students for success in calculus course revitalization. So funding for this research project uh, was received by the Tennessee Board of Regents uh, under the course revitalization grant. The timeline for the study was fall 2019, and it was just the pilot study at that time. And uh, we implemented a model used to heighten student learning, uh, and we refer to that as ESSC, course revitalization. So this uh, ESSC uh, was a course revitalization designed to improve student success rates in calculus. A research study um, was grounded in the principles of Bloom's taxonomy with active learning strategies to promote higher order levels of thinking. This particular course revitalization was implemented at Tennessee State University, TSU, which is a public historically black university or an HBCU that offers associates, bachelor's, master's and doctoral degrees. The goal 
of this particular course revitalization was to increase the academic performance, persistence, and graduation rates of students majoring in STEM disciplines. So at TSU, students majoring in mathematics, chemistry, architectural engineering, civil engineering, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, and computer science are all required to take Calculus 1 or first semester calculus. TSU currently has 79% African-American students. Therefore, the revitalized course impacted a large number of students from underrepresented groups. This study was motivated by the need to improve the success rate of students in calculus at TSU and to graduate more underrepresented minority students in STEM areas to meet the national demand for more STEM professionals. So before the engaging students for success in calculus course revitalization model was implemented um, during the academic year 2017 through 2018 in calculus, there were 192 students enrolled across all sections. The overall success rate for those sections of calculus during that academic year was 44.3%. And if you look at the table, you can see that there were 13% of those students who received A's, 14.6 of those students received B's, and 16.7% of those students received C's. So any student that earned a D, F, or withdrew from the course was considered a failure. Design, implementation, data, and results. So in thinking about how we would uh, develop the ESSC model, the following goals were considered. So we wanted to improve student knowledge retention by developing multiple levels of cognition. We also wanted to promote student engagement through the implementation of active learning techniques. And we wanted to support student learning outcomes through the integration of technology into the course. So these goals were achieved by implementing Bloom's taxonomy, active learning, and clickers, which have all been proven to be effective in increasing student learning. So the following were the objective for ESSC. Implement active learning techniques, utilize clickers during class time, design assessments using Bloom's taxonomy and those different levels of um, understanding and knowledge retention uh, to engage students in the learning process individually and in groups and give students opportunities to practice concepts and show what they know using a variety of modalities. The expected outcomes were to increase student success rates in Calculus 1, to enhance student engagement, that's in class and outside of the class, enhance students' confidence in their mathematics skills, to encourage collaborative learning, expose students to the real world problems, how can they apply the knowledge and content and theory that they learn in the classroom to real life problems, and to positively impact STEM student retention and graduation. So since calculus is a course that most of the STEM students are required to take, um, it was important for us to try to come up with strategies uh, and techniques that we could implement with our students so they could be successful in calculus. So in terms of our design, of ESSC, it has been shown that the academic development of students majoring in STEM disciplines can be improved 
if they have positive learning experiences in their mathematics courses. ESSC was designed so that students at varying levels of preparedness and experience could be successful. It also is novel in that principles of Bloom's taxonomy were combined with active learning strategies and clicker technology to increase student learning and improve their academic performance. To implement ESCC, ESSC, we used a variety of assessments and through these assessments, student learning outcomes were tracked. So one type of assessment we used were the clicker questions. Clicker questions were usually administered in a cooperative learning environment. At this level of assessment, students had just recently been introduced to skills that are necessary to solve problems. Another type of assessment was homework. Homework was given as individual assignments in an online environment. Homework was used to practice and develop skills. This was after topics had been introduced in class and examples had been worked. Students could work on their homework individually or they could work collaboratively. Another type of assessment were quizzes. Quizzes were formative assessments and they were administered as individual assignments. So quizzes were a low stakes method, a low stakes um, type of test. At this level of assessment, students had already been introduced to a few related problems, a few related topics, and they had practiced similar problems inside class and outside of class. So by the time of stu students took quizzes, they had done clicker questions, they had done homework, and all of this were related to the topics that would be on the quiz. Summative tests were administered as individual assignments. At this level of assessment, students, um, several topics had been introduced. Students had done clicker questions, students had done homework, students had done quizzes, and all of those things were used to help them to perform better on the summative tests. At this level of assessments, the level of difficulty had not increased, but the students had to use more analytical and evaluative cognitive skills because there was more information on the summative test than there were on the other types of assessment items. So we administered a pre-survey to the students at the beginning of the semester. So this is some of the responses that were collected from the pre-survey. So for the item, it is useful for me to practice lots of problems when learning mathematics. Most of the students, all of the students either agreed or strongly agreed with that statement. For the statement, I cannot learn mathematics if the professor does not explain things well in class. Most of the students either agreed or strongly agreed with that statement. There were a couple of students who were neutral or disagreed with that statement. To understand mathematics, I discuss it with other students. A lot of the students agreed with this statement. Um, there were some students who disagreed and there were a a few students, there were some students who were neutral, but more of them either agreed or strongly agreed. Critical thinking skills used to understand mathematics can be helpful to me in everyday life. For this statement, all of the students either were neutral or agreed, strongly agreed or just agreed. And for the statement, I am looking forward to learning calculus most of the students agreed with this statement. So this was very good to know that as the student entered the course, that they were looking forward to learning the course material. We also administered a post survey at the end of the semester. And some of these questions that were on the post survey tracked with the questions that were on the pre-survey. 
So for the question for the um, statement, the online homework helped to reinforce and improve my knowledge. All of the students agreed with that statement somewhat or strongly or just agreed, but all of the students agreed that the homework was helpful in reinforcing and improving their knowledge. For the statement, the professor explained things well. All of the students agreed with that statement and there was one student who was neutral. None of the students disagreed with that statement. Working in groups helped to reinforce or improve my knowledge. All of the students agreed with that statement and there was one neutral student. But this was good because this showed that the active learning, the cooperative and collaborative active learning techniques that we use did positively impact the students. This course helped me to develop or improve my critical thinking skills. All of the students felt that this course had um, positively improved their critical thinking skills. For the statement, I feel ready for my next mathematics course or any courses which involve the content covered in Calculus 1. All of the students agreed with that statement. So the students had a positive, had positive attitudes after taking um, the Calculus 1 course, the revitalized Calculus 1 course. Some of the other data that we collected um, were these quantitative data showed here in these tables. It shows the grade distribution for all of the students who were enrolled in Calculus 1, and it shows the grade distribution for all of the African American students who were enrolled in Calculus 1. So in the first table, we see that for the non-revitalized section, there were 42 students. Of those 42 students, three earned a grade of A, six earned a B, and seven earned C. For the revitalized section, in which there were 47 students, we had six students to earn A's, nine students to earn B's, and 13 students to earn C's. And when we disaggregated that data for African American students, we see that in the non revitalized section, there were 36 African American students. And in the revitalized section, there were 38 African American students. In the non revitalized section, the courses that were taught the traditional way, three students earned an A. But in our revitalized section, five students earned an A. In the non revitalized section, three students earned a B. In our revitalized section, seven students earned B, and, and these are the African-American students. And in the non-revitalized section, six African-American students earned a C, and in the revitalized section, 11 African-American students earned the grade of C. So you can see here that the students who were enrolled in the revitalized section overall performed better than the students who were enrolled in the non-revitalized sections, the course that was taught in the traditional manner. Some of the other data we collected from the post survey, in response to the prompt, what I like most about this class was, these statements show um, that students liked the engagement that was in the class. So for example, one student responded how much we engaged as a class. Another student, having the professor engage with the students and how the teacher was able to explain some of the most difficult things in the easiest way. And if you recall, that was one of the statements that was in the pre-survey when we, were, we asked the students you know, how did they learn? Did they need to have the students to, the, the professors to explain things well in order for them to learn? So this speaks to that. And some of the other statements that students gave spoke about um, how much the teachers, the professors cared. So one, one student responded that she cared about us. Another student that she actually cared about the class. And another statement refers to how the teacher 
taught, the professor did not move too fast and the lecturers did not feel rushed or too much information at once. So this could be because of the interactive lectures, the way we would teach, where we would just give small chunks of lecture and then allow the students to do some type of active exercise. And it could just be something as simple as asking a question and giving them time to work the problem out and to confer with each other. So it doesn't have to be anything elaborate, but just not giving them too much information, just overloading them with information can have a positive impact on how they learn calculus. Some other post-survey responses to the same prompt, what I like most about the class, the group work, working together, everyone asks questions. These all speak to the collaborative environment that the class fostered. Everyone in the class was willing to help each other and work together, growing and improving in the subject, the group work, where there were group leaders who were strong and helpful in learning too. So these statements show that the students really did appreciate engaging with their peers and working in groups to learn the course content. So a summary of what we found in our ESSC study. The components of the ESSC research study were implemented to improve student knowledge retention, to promote student engagement, and to support student learning. From the statements that the students gave, it seems as if the students were able to achieve these things. In order to determine the effectiveness of the study, both qualitative and quantitative evidence were examined and it suggests the following. Working cooperatively helped to reinforce and improve student knowledge. This was evidenced by the students' attitudes as well as by the quantitative data that we collected. Levels of student to student and student to teacher engagement were increased. Having a variety of formative assessments helped the students to perform better on the summative assessment. And that's what we try to offer. We will offer the clicker questions. We would offer the homework. We will offer the quizzes. We would do all of those things before we were to, before we gave a summative assessment. And we didn't change the level of the questions. So we made sure that before the students took a summative assessment, that they had already been introduced to the types of the way the questions would be answered. We didn't surprise them on a summative assessment with types of questions that they had never seen before. Having students' success in calculus one increased, and students experience gains in effective learning. And this was shown in the um, in the in the response in the responses to the post survey. All right, so the potential of the ESSC. This study has the potential to contribute to the body of knowledge on ways to improve mathematics skills for students. It has the potential to identify successful teaching strategies and technologies that will promote the retention of STEM students. It also has the potential to increase the success rates of students taking calculus and to help produce more students who are prepared to excel in STEM disciplines. Because Calculus One is, that, is a gateway course to most of the STEM disciplines at TSU. So success in Calculus One is very important for their retention as a STEM major. The 
the overall merit of this study, the overall merit of this study is strengthened by the empirical findings that suggest that the expected outcomes of the study were achieved. The information derived from this study expands the body of knowledge on Calculus I course design, instruction, and assessment. And this study has transformed the teaching and learning of Calculus I at TSU. The findings of the ESCC, ESSC study contribute significantly to understanding how to engage students as active participants in their own learning. And this study is easily, is easily adaptable in other universities. So in order to design engaging calculus curricula, mathematics departments must consider the diverse needs of their students and implement strategies to ensure that all students can learn regardless of their levels of preparedness. A main component of ESSC is active learning and active learning has been shown to help increase student learning, particularly in STEM courses. Active learning techniques can be easily adapted to fit a variety of learning settings. There are a variety of, of active learning techniques. The familiarity of the Bloom's taxonomy framework increases the ability of the ESSC to be reproduced by a wide range of institutions of higher education. Our ongoing research study. So currently, our current undergraduate mathematics research is focused on face-to-face -face learning, hybrid learning, and online teaching and learning. So this is, you know, the shift in um, learning to um, from on ground learning to online learning or even hybrid learning has caused us to include that in our in our research focus. The aim of, the, of our new study is to identify, implement and disseminate information about best practices in undergraduate mathematics courses, particularly for students at HBCUs and students who are underrepresented minorities. Future so here we want to discuss uh, some potential future directions in terms of research studies and work that can be done uh, in this area. So the first one uh, that we thought of is reimagining undergraduate STEM education in the midst of COVID-19. Uh, as was mentioned earlier, you know, since we have uh, the pandemic going on, uh, many of our courses are now being offered either as hybrid courses or fully online or remotely. So it's important to address that fact. So um, when you're teaching in person, there are differences um, than when you're teaching online or remotely. So um, thinking about how we can adjust and change and enhance what we do, uh, even in the midst of the pandemic. Identifying best practices for mathematics face-to-face, -face, hybrid and remote instruction, uh, effectively using technology such as clickers, videos, online learning platforms, learning management systems, etc., to teach undergraduate mathematics and contributing to the achievement of inclusive excellence in STEM higher education. Thank you. Any questions?
Okay. So I see one question in the chat. Um, are all of the classes now going to adopt this method? Well, currently all of the classes have not adopted the method since the pilot study was done just a year ago. Um, and we now, you know, have transitioned uh, in terms of everything going on with the pandemic and um, everyone's kind of just trying to figure out how to make it work. Um, I think we will need to have discussions again uh, in terms of how to best um, utilize the strategies and methods that we included as a part of our work uh, now uh, in this different style or format of teaching. So I there have been discussions about adopting this method across all of the sections of Calculus One, but due to the recent uh, pandemic and a lot of transitions that have taken place, uh, currently there still are only three sections um, that have been utilizing uh, this method. Dr. Payne, did you want to add to that? Yes, so for the spring, um before we were released for an in remote instruction, the three sections, we actually taught all three of the six, all three of the sections that were using the revitalized model. So in that way, all of the students who were taking calculus one at TSU during the spring did receive instruction through the revitalized course model. But that was because the two of us were teaching all of the sections that were being offered. I have a just kind of comment about um, the, the research study engaging students for success in calculus. The funding and support that we received from um, the Tennessee Board of Regents really helped us to <clears throat> formalize our work. So we were already doing several things in the classroom in terms of uh, trying to figure out what really worked best for students uh, in terms of uh, learning calculus and performing academically, as well as encouraging them to want to persist in STEM areas. So um, receiving the TBRCR grant really um, kind of helped us to, to figure out exactly what we were doing, how we were doing, that in also collecting data and figuring out how to move forward in terms of, of the research. So um, I think, you know, you know, you're always, you know, if you care, you're always kind of doing different things to try to make uh, students learn more, help them be successful, but having funding to do it um, really kind of formalized our work and helped us to really pinpoint you know, the things that we were doing, how it was different than the traditional way of the course being offered and things of that nature. So there's another question. Um, uh, thanks. It's like a follow-up to the previous question about if all of the courses would adopt this method. Uh, I guess my concern is whether all faculty will be willing to adopt these strategies. It's a lot more work to teach this way. Dr. Payne, do you want to respond to that? So we have begun discussions with other faculty and true, it is a lot more work to teach this way but it's also um, more beneficial to the students. And I think that our faculty are willing to um, adopt 
if not all of these approaches, at least some of these methods in order to increase student learning. But we are in discussions and because of the pandemic, we've just been um, not able to have as many discussions as we would like to have had concerning this. You have anything else to add, Dr. Stanberry? I also think that, you know, if the strategies and or activities um, or assessments or whatever we're using are already designed and ready to go, that um, that also makes faculty more willing to do it because the work has already been done, right? They're just what, using it in their class. So I think because we've already done a lot of the groundwork in term, terms of developing uh, materials, designing assessments, kind of figuring out which teaching techniques work the best, that um, it simplifies things for other faculty. So I think if they saw the benefit, which we've been discussing, that they would certainly be more open to um, utilizing some of the things that uh, we've done in, in this work. If there are no other questions, thank you very much for attending our presentation. We hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you.